Hello, this is Emma of Emma Live Yoga and welcome to this Ashtanga inspired special where we're going to lift up and we're going to salute the sun. So nice energizing energetic practice. You will need two bricks or blocks would be great. The usual mat if you need a blanket for your knees, please do have that in place. So we're going to start from here. So Kasana, easy cross leg position or you can stretch the legs out. If you need to sit on something, please do. And just take a few moments to have a wriggle. Make sure that you're comfortably seated equally on the sitting bones. So as you arrive here, just gently close the eyes. And just begin that process of settling and centering as you bring the hands to the heart space. Feel you connect here with the breath. And also take this time here to plant any intentions, any sankalpas you have. Wherever this practice meets you at this moment in your life. And feeling that inner sunshine, that inner surya of the heart beating. The breath moving as we begin to drop down into the body. Dropping down into sensation and feeling a gentle squeeze of the pelvic floor, Mula Bandha, and a lifting in and up of Uddiyana Bandha through the abdomen. We'll endeavor to keep these bandhas in place throughout the practice. So we'll initiate our practice with the sacred vibration of Om. You can listen or join in. Take a breath in. Oh. And then resting the hands down somewhere comfortably in the lap. Take a deeper breath on the inhale. And on the exhale, gently blink open the eyes. And we'll just begin to meet our ujjayi breath. So slight constriction in the back of the throat. Big inhale, lengthening the spine. Breath with sound. Big exhale, shoulders releasing. Begin to cultivate your breath. Inhale. Exhale. And then from here, inhale, float the arms out at shoulder high. Exhale, and just feel you can stretch out into those fingertips. We're going to warm up the shoulders. Big inhale, keep the breath moving like a metronome. On the exhale, have a lean over to the right side. Feel the top of that left hip, side body. Inhale to center, exhale, lean over to the left side. If you need to reposition, that's okay. Make sure you've got some space. That's it. Inhale to center, exhale, lean over to the right side. Keep the shoulders relaxed, chest lifting. Knees relaxing, inhale to center, exhale, lean over to the left side. And then inhale to center. On the exhale, bring the palms of the hands together in front of you, interweave the fingers. Inhale, scoop the palms of the hands forward as you round the back and just drop the chin to the chest. Take a few easy breaths here. Same with the Ujjayi. I'm kind of dropping off the tailbone as the tailbone tucks under. I feel that opening in the lower back. And then inhale, squeeze the pelvic floor as you lift the chest forward. Also lift the hands all the way up. On the exhale, just begin to have a little sway from side to side. So inhale into center, exhale, sway. Doesn't have to be dramatic, just feel you're warming up the side body, so no stress. Sway, that's it. Inhaling, exhaling, sway. And try and straighten out through the elbows. Inhale as you come to center. Exhale, release the hands, circle the wrist down. Bring the hands down and just have a little shimmy, a little shake through the shoulders. Good. And then from here, bring the hands to Anjali Mudra. Inhale, lift the prayer hands up. Exhale, twist into your right side. Left hand goes forward, right hand goes back. Inhale to lengthen. 
On the exhale, drift the head to look over the left shoulder. We're going to keep this dynamic. Then inhale as you drift all the way back to center, warming up the neck muscles. Exhale, drifting all the way to the side or even over the right shoulder. We'll do this once more. Inhale, keep a lift of those internal valves, the bandas. Exhale, gliding nice and easy over to that right side. And then inhale, as we glide the head back, lift the arms up. Exhale, Pabrita Supasana to the left side, right hand comes forward, left hand goes back. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, glide the head to the side, maybe over the left shoulder. Keep the gaze level, nice steady drifty. Inhale, slow glide to side, then back to the front. Once more, exhale, glide to look over the left shoulder. Inhale, glide, slowly coming back to center. Exhale, inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, circle down to your flamenco wrist the opposite direction. And then shake out the wrists. And from here, we'll make our way over to an all fours position. So if you need to set up your blanket for your knees, please do. Have the hands underneath the shoulders, fingers and thumbs spread, knees underneath the hips. Feel you can gently draw the shoulders back, feel some tone through the abdominals and just hold this position. Feel that nice weight bearing. Find your Ujjayi breath as you gaze gently between the thumbs. So we're just getting used to the weight bearing here, warming up. So the body doesn't get any surprises. If you wish to make this a little stronger, you can inhale. On the exhale, and just begin to drift forward so you uh, press more hands in, uh, weight into the hands and the wrists. Inhale as you drift slowly back. That's it. Exhale, drifting forward. So you keep those arms nice and straight. It's just warming up the fronts of the wrists, warm up the shoulders a bit more. Inhale to drift back. Good. Then exhale as you come back to neutral position. From here, tuck the toes under. Inhale. Exhale, push and lift back into Ardha Mukha Svanasana, Downward Dog. Then begin to walk the dog, lifting and lowering the heels as the head dangles. Again, reconnect with your breath in the inversion. Maybe gazing lightly between the heels or between the knees. Warming up the back to the legs. And then come to static downward dog, reach the heels back and down as you lift up through the sitting bones, gently draw the kneecaps in without locking the knees. Nice steady breathing, warming up everything. And then inhale, bring the knees down, keep the toe tuck if you can lift with it. Squeeze the elbows in, exhale down through Ardha Chaturanga, so lowering all the way to the belly and then release the toes. From here, slide the hands underneath the shoulders, soften the glutes, press the toenails down. On the inhale, baby cobra, just lift the chest, peel the chest away from the floor, keep the lower back nicely relaxed, pull back on the hands, exhale to lower. Try not to tense the glutes. Inhale, little lift. If you wish to go higher, you may come up to a higher cobra, just lift the elbows into the sides of the body. And then exhale to lower. So you've got three options here. Inhale, baby cobra, full bhujangasana, or lift the knees away from the floor, coming to upward dog if you wish. Then exhale, press the knees down, tuck the toes under and push back into downward dog. Reconnect with the breath. Lengthening the spine. As we continue this Ashtanga inspired journey, we're building up to our suryas, our salutes to the sun. So then up onto the toes, bend the knees, inhale, look between the thumbs and just walk the feet forward nice and easy. Kindness to the knees. Keep the knees bent at this stage. Exhale, let the head fall down in Chavutanasana. And then inhale as we swoosh the arms all the way up. Maybe lift the gaze. Urva Hastasana. And exhale as we bring the hands to the sides of the body for Samastiti Heat. Briefly connect the hands to the heart space. Reconnect here with your intention. Feel the flow of the breath and decide whether your feet are, will be together or whether your feet will be hip distance. See which feels best in your body. 
So we'll begin here with a nice modified Surya Namaskar A. So releasing the hands to the sides of the body. On the inhale, swoosh the arms forward and up, maybe look up. On the exhale, swan dive down, but bend the knees deeply until you're able to place the hands down on the floor. On the inhale, slide the hands up to the shins, lengthen the spine as you lift the heart forward. On the exhale, as you bend the knees, plant the hands, step back and bring both knees down. Keep the toe tuck, lower the body through Ardha Chaturanga. Nice modification. Release the toes, inhale to lift to baby cobra or a higher cobra or an upward dog if your back feels ready. Exhale, bring the knees down, tuck the toes under, pushing back into down the dog and evening out the breath. So seeing if you can achieve Samanasana, balance between the inhale and the exhale, feeling those waves of breath up and down the spine. As always, you can bring the knees down, coming to child pose. If downward dog gets a bit too much, you need a bit more of a timeout. Remember the breath comes first. Keep practicing a hymns of kindness, respect to your body. Whatever your mind may be saying, listen to the deep wisdom of your body instead. Then up onto the toes, bend the knees, look forward. Inhale, you can step or maybe do a jog through as things are warming up. Lengthen and exhale, fold into Uttanasana. Again, bend the knees, keep everything nice and easy. Inhale, swoosh the arms back and up as we lift all the way up. And exhale into Samasthiti. Good, nice work. Take a full breath there. I'm going to repeat this. So inhale, round two, swoosh the arms forward and up. Exhale, swan dive down. Again, fine to bend the knees. You might be able to straighten a bit more. Just see how you feel. Inhale, slide the hands to the shins or maybe the ankles this time as you lengthen the spine. Exhale, as you plant the hands, bend the knees. Step back, left leg, right leg. Again, bring the knees down. Keep the toe tuck, lower the body through so Ardha Chaturanga. Release the toes. Inhale, lift into baby cobra, full cobra or upward dog. See which suits your body. And exhale, knees are down, tuck the toes, pushing back into downward dog and evening out the breath. So we'll introduce an Ashtanga style count. So this is one. So now this is a count. It doesn't reflect how many breaths you're taking. Two, it just reflects how long we're going to stay here, just a period of time. Three, and that may be in downward dog or it may be in child. Choose the best option. Four, stay so nice and strong through those shoulders so the neck is relaxed. Five, bend the knees up onto the toes, look forward, inhale, step, jog, or possibly jump through. Again, choose the best option. Exhale to fold, let the head dangle, bent knees is always an option. Inhale as you swoosh the arms all the way up. And exhaling to Samasthiti. Okay, starting to warm up. We're going to go for another round, round three. Sanskrit calm, air calm, inhale, lift the arms up. Dve, exhale, forward fold. Trini, inhale, hands to shins, ankles, open stay on the floor. Chakvare, bend the knees, step back, knees down, or keep the knees up as you lower through Chaturanga. Pancha, inhale as you lift to back bend the child. Sha, exhale as you push back into downward dog. One, evening out the breath. Two, feeling the inner heat from the breath moving. Three, keep your dristy nice and soft and relaxed. Four, try and draw the shoulders away from the ears up towards the waist. Five, bend the knees, look forwards. Supta, inhale, step, jog or jump. Ashtao, exhale, let the head down go. Nava, inhale as we lift all the way up. Exhale, 
slam our Stiti Yi. Doing really well. We're going to do one more round of Surya A. A calm. Inhale. Lift the arms. Dve. Exhale. Fold forwards. Trini. Inhale. Lift the heart space. Shatvare. Exhale. Step back. Knees down. Lower the body or knees up. Pancha. Inhale. Back bend of choice. Sha, exhale, pushing back into downward dog. One, to so see where you can relax, even if it's just your eyeballs. Two, head is really heavy. Now you can bring your knees down at any point, listen to your body. Three, nice steady breath. Four, Five, look forward. Supta, inhale, step joko jump. Ashta, exhale, let the head pull forward. Nava, inhale, rising all the way up. And exhale, samastiti. Well done, everyone. Stand tall. Feel that energy flowing, that sun, solar power flowing through the body and all of the cells moving in the breath. Again, bring the hands to Anjali. As you arrive here, feeling this open heart sun energy, you might think of just one thing that you're grateful for in this moment. Cultivating this gratitude helps us to develop strength and resilience. Good, then releasing the prayer hands as we move to a breakdown version of Surya Namaskar B. So, first of all, on the inhale, we'll sit back into Utkatasana chair pose. Now we'll stay here, make sure that your hands are above your knees, elbows can go wide, and just sit back into your heels, so you're not front-loading those knees, that's perfect. Good, squeeze the knees together if the feet are together, tense the glutes, squeeze the glutes, nice strong legs, relax the shoulders as you find your ujjayi breath. Next option here is to lift the chest a smidgen and bring the hands to Anjali Mudra. Keep breathing as you sit back. Nice, strong legs. Good. Next option, only if you wish, is to float the palms up, palms facing, and gaze straight down. Now you might float the hands further together. You might even bring the palms together and lift the gaze to the thumbs to see what feels best in your neck. Don't strain yourself. Then exhale as you fold belly to thighs, bring the hands down and float the sitting bones up. Feel that lovely opening in the back of the leg. Inhale, lift the heart forward, or you can lift the hands to the shins. Exhale, stepping or even jumping back if that's in your practice, lowering the body through Chaturanga. Inhaling to lift into back bend of choice, press down through the shoulders. Exhale, pushing back into downward dog. Inhale, bring the left heel in. Exhale, step forward with the right foot as we come to Virabhadrasana A. Fingertips to either side of the right foot and just take this moment to stabilize. So pressing the back heel down, pressing the front heel down, lift the chest. On the inhale, begin to lift the backs of the hands back as you open the heart space. That's it. Nice strong breathing. Exhale, press the palms together. Feel the drawing back of the shoulders as the uh, chest lifts. From here on the inhale, you can float the prayer hands straight up. Again, if this bothers your shoulders, just float the palms apart, see what's best. If you want to come into the back bend, keep bending into the front knee and lift the gaze towards the thumbs. See what's best for your body. Exhale, swim the arms back and down as you pivot on the back foot. Step back with the right leg, lower the body through chaturanga, knees down or otherwise. Inhaling to lift the heart space, roll our shoulders open, that's it. Exhale, pushing back into downward dog. Changing sides, inhale, bring the right heel in. Exhale, step through with the left foot and stay there. Make sure the fingertips are either side of the left foot. 
Weight in the back heel, stabilize. Engage your bandhas. Then inhale as you lift, lift the heart space, lift the back to the hands, back. Feel that opening through the hip flexors. If you wish to, bring the hands to Anjali. Feel that connection with the heart space. Steady breathing. Final option, inhale, lift the prayer hands up. Feel that internal rotation through the arms. Option to lift into back bend if you wish. See what's best for you. Looking good, everybody. That's it. Stay strong through the legs. Exhale as you circle the arms back. Plant the hands, pivot on the back foot, step back, coming down. Through Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhaling to lift, back bend of choice. Nice and easy. Exhale, pushing back into downward dog. And even out the breath. If you need to bring the knees down, please do. So your B is a lot more demanding than A. You should be feeling some nice heat through the body. Be a little bit of a challenge. Then up onto the toes, bend the knees, look forward, inhale, step, jog or jump through. Exhale to fold, let the head dangle. Inhale, sit back into Utkatasana, float the arms up. And exhale, straighten the legs to Samasthiti. Pause there. Bring the hands to the heart space. Even out the breath as you need to. Shoulders are relaxing. Feeling both your inner and your outer strength. We're going to go through a flow of Surya Namaskar B. See how you get on. So bringing the hands down to the sides of the body. Air calm, inhale, sit back. Float the gaze up if you wish. Dve, exhale, fold forwards, hands to the floor. Trini, inhale, lift the heart space. Chakvare, bend the knees, step or jump back, coming down through Chaturanga. Pancha, inhale, back bend of choice. Sha, exhale, pushing back into downward dog. Bring the left heel in. Supta, inhale, step forward with the right leg, float the arms up. Remember all of your options with the arms. Ashtau, exhale, fold forward, put it on the back foot, lower the body. Nava, inhale, lifting into back bend. Desha, Exhale, pushing back into downward dog. Bring the right heel in, step forward with the left. Eka Desha, inhale, lift up. Rubhadrasana A, doing well to the left side. Dve Desha, exhale, fold forward, step back, lower the body. Trayo Desha, inhale, lift the heart space, back bend. Shatvav Desha, exhale, pushing back into downward dog. One, even out the breath. Two, do you wake and relax? Three, you can't even out your breath, bring your knees down. Four, Five. Bend the knees, look forward. Pancha, desha, step, jog or jump. So, desha, exhale, let the head go. Sukta, desha, sit back through Utkatasana. And Samastitihi. Well done, everybody. Pause there for a breath. So we're going to move away from the Suryas now. So from this position, bring the hands to the hips, bend the knees. On the inhale, step out with the left leg as we come to a wide angle position. As we took Padottanasana family, make sure that the feet are parallel with the side edge of the mat so the toes aren't sticking out. From here, bring your hands to your waist, not your hips, but your waist. Nice, strong grip. Relax the shoulders. Inhale, take the arms out with shoulder height like we did right at the beginning. 
Exhale, bring the hands back to the waist. Prasarita Padottanasana A. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, begin to fall forward, straight leg or bend the legs as you need to, bringing the hands to the floor, shoulder distance apart. You see, we're right there. Inhale, lift the heart forward. And on the exhale, hinge the elbows back and guide the crown of the head towards the floor. So your head may be dangling in space, that's really good for your neck. Or you might be able to bring your head all the way down, the crown of the head, in which case you can walk the hands back between the feet. Squeeze the elbows towards each other as if you were holding a brick or block between them. Nice steady breathing as you suck up the inner thighs. Stay strong there. Now from here, if your head is easily down, the palms of the hands are easily down, you can begin to press weight into the hands and so your heels become light and kind of tinker with eventually being able to lift up. So you might be able to lift your feet up, taking the legs out to the sides. Keep those elbows nicely parallel. That's just the extension, don't worry if you're nowhere near that. If you're in that, then just begin to drift your sitting bones back until you can place your feet down lightly. Then everybody on the inhale, lift the heart forward. Exhale, bring the hands back to the waist. Squeeze the inner thighs, inhale to lift up, squeeze, nice and easy. Exhale as we pause here. Good, C, uh, B variation. Inhale, take the arms out to the sides. Exhale, bring the hands to the waist and you're gonna keep them there. Inhale, lift the heart space. Exhale, begin to fold forward as you squeeze the elbows back. Keep those legs nice and long and strong. Again, you can let the head dangle in space. If that's happening, try and tip your weight into your toes. Or you can bring the crown of the head to the floor. That might take you some time. Maybe some years, it's all good. Stay focused on what's important, the breath, the lift of the bandas, and the dristi off the tip of the nose and beyond, the Pinocchio dristi of Nagasarai dristi. A few more breaths. Then press the hands firmly into the waist, inhale to slowly begin to lift back up. Good, exhale, pause there. We're gonna do one more variation. C variation, inhale, take the arms out with shoulder high. Exhale, interweave the fingers behind you and just roll the shoulders open. Inhale, lift the chest, nice strong legs. Exhale, begin to hinge forward. So you might come to halfway. You might begin to lift the arms away from the sitting bones. You might be able to bring the crown of the head down and take the arms to wherever you're able to. Wherever you are, stay happy, keep breathing. Keep lifting through the inner thighs. Nice, steady, dristy. Keep pinning in the outer hip joints. We'll see why you can surrender and let go through the shoulders, but with no force, don't lock the elbows. Then as if someone is pulling you up by the hands, inhale, squeeze and lift. Whoa, did we make it? That's it. Exhale as you arrive. Inhale, clasp the hands, take the arms out with shoulder high. Exhale, bring the hands back to the waist and then just heel toe the feet towards each other. Heel toe, heel toe until it's comfortable to then step forward and come back to Samasthiti. Well done, hands by the side of the body. Take a few moments here to feel a spaciousness which may have emerged in the lower body. We're going to take a vinyasa down to seated. So inhale, float the arms up. Exhale to fold forwards. Remember all of your options, they all still apply. Inhale to lengthen, lift the hand forward. Exhale, bend the knees, step or jump back, lower through chaturanga. Inhale it to lift, back bend of choice, open the heart. Exhale, pushing back into downward dog. And then bend the knees, look towards the thumbs. Inhale, step, jog or jump through. I mean, all the way down. And stretch the legs out as we come to the neutralizing asana of Dandasana. 
So make sure you're equally on the sitting bones, toes are active, not too much activation through the quads. Bring the hands either side of the hips, lift the chest, inhale. Exhale, release the chin to the chest. So keeping the back really nice and long, those bandas are engaged. <clears throat> so the shoulders are releasing away from the ears. And just feel this settling down into the uh, sitting bones. But at the same time, the hands are active. So then inhale, lift the gaze. Exhale, release the hands. As we come to Paschimottanasana, you might inch the glutes back so you're in a nice internal rotation through the pelvis. From here, inhale, float the arms up, lift the heart space. And on the exhale, begin to carry the heart forward. So your hands might alight on the shins, the nice long back, might be the ankles. You might be able to maintain a long back in Paschimottanasana A, which is a double finger leap of the big toes. Wherever you are, I want you to feel that your back is nice and long, you're not rounding. The so nice lift of the heart space towards the toes on the inhale. Exhale and draw the shoulders down. Make sure you're not drawing the knees in too firmly, soften around the kneecaps. Find the patience that this variation of Paschimottanasana demands, where we avoid sinking and rounding. Find that discipline to do less. Relax the face. Know that the rounding is coming so you can feel a nice relaxation through your back muscles. So then inhale, lift the chest. And on the exhale, just begin to fold forward to whatever feels comfortable. So this might be a rounding down, that's okay. All we're trying to do is release the back muscles. Think about carrying your belly forward. Everything is moving forward and then you can bring your forehead down. You need to change your grip, that's fine. You might take it to C, taking hold of the hands. You might take it to B, feeling the feet back. Deep in the breath, but keep the eyes open. And inhale, lift the gaze. And exhale and release back. From here, cross at the ankles. So we practice doing this. You try to lift, take the knees back. Step back into plank position and just hold your plank for a moment. So the hands are underneath the shoulders. Feet might be together, a tuck of the tailbone, and then just press your weight out of the shoulders as you breathe. So remember this is a pike version. If you're more comfortable in the straight body version, that's okay. Just sink down into that. This pike is great if you've got any back problems. It really supports your lower back and builds strength through the shoulders. Everybody's still with me, still breathing. How are we doing? Staying happy. Exhale, lower the body down through Chaturanga. Inhale into lift, into backbender choice. And exhale to push back into downward dog. Looking forward, bend the knees. Inhale, step, jog or jump through. Exhale as we arrive. And then from here, bring in the blocks either side of the body. Staying up on the sitting bones, walking the feet in. I'm going to set up for Navasana initially. A little bit of core work. So up onto the big toes, lift the chest forward. And then take the arms forward at about shoulder height. So feel a lift of the chest towards the thighs. That's it. Breathe in here. Keep a squeeze of those bandas. Then bringing the hands to the bricks so or blocks, inhale, cross the right ankle over the left. Exhale, take the shoulders forward and see if you can lift up or engage. Good, and then lower back down. We're just doing one more variation, being kind today. So next variation, if you wish, is to lean back slightly. Lift the legs in the same level as the arms as you lift the chest forward. Or you can come to straight leg, so just see what's best for you. Keep breathing. Then cross left ankle over right. Press and lift up or engage. Good, and exhale as you lower. Stretch the legs out. Take the bricks either side. Cross at the ankles. Step or jump back into Chaturanga plank. Lower the body. 
Inhaling to lift, back bend the choice. And exhale, pushing back into downward dog. Even out the breath there. Good, and then look forward, inhale, step, jog or jump through to seated, coming down, and exhale. So from here, we'll just do a little wrist release, bring the feet together for Baddha Konasana, and just begin to butterfly wing the knees, so begin with the groin, that's it. This also releases your lower back muscles, lift the chest, draw your shoulders down. Then from here, you can come to static and just bring the backs of the wrists to rest, just above the knees. Give my hands, give the fingers and thumbs a wiggle. Good, releasing the wrists. And then from here, just bring the palms down. You might do a little circle in one direction and a circle in the other direction, releasing the groin in relation to the lower back. Good, so moving on to our lift-ups. So you've got your bricks again. So we're going to take the bricks to the higher setting. Only do this if you've got the cork bricks. If you don't, then stay on the lower sitting if you've just got the blocks. Yeah, so you've got the foam blocks, just stay there. Otherwise, your hands face forward, whichever you're using. From here, your legs are lightly in a cross-leg position. Roll the shoulders back, lift the chest, engage the bandas, inhale. And on the exhale, initially you'll try and press into the hands Draw the shoulders down and see if you can lift up, keeping the ankles on the floor. Good, breathe in, draw the shoulders down. Lift, 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 look straight forward. And then tinker with lifting your pelvic floor a little bit more, a little bit lower, squeeze. That's it, try and draw those shoulders down. And exhale, lower. Good, from here, back into our comfort routine, release the wrists. Have a little sway, have a little circle. Nice and easy. I said, always balancing, sit down with sukham, strength with comfort, really important. So that was option one. If that was a big ask, you're gonna stay with that. You might practice that for some time. Just shake out the wrists. So then bringing the hands back to the bricks or blocks. As you need to move position, that's fine, but ideally you have them roughly underneath your own shoulders, stacking the joints. From here, this time you lift the knees up and keep the ankles uh, together. Flex the toes, so draw the toes back towards the feet, so nice and strong. From here, inhale, squeeze the pelvic floor. On the exhale, you'll push and lift, and this time you'll tinker with lifting up. So lifting up the ankles, good, draw those shoulders down, squeeze, 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 lift the knees, lift, 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 and exhale, coming down. Well done, remember your routine. It's okay, mind, we've always got this to come, no need to panic. No need for any drama, it's all good. We're just working with the body and we're just exploding all those self-imposed limitations that the mind creates. We know we have to do these things a lot in order to one day lift up or maybe do a jump back or a jump through. <laughs> okay, we've got one more. So from here, assume the position so you might be just like this and doing a little mini lift up. You might be like this with view to lifting up the ankles. Just see, it might not happen, it's all right. Stay happy. Inhale, exhale, push and lift. So tinker, lifting up the ankles, squeeze the knees towards each other. Draw everything up towards the chest. Draw those shoulders down, breathe in, squeezing, breathing, and exhale. <laughs> Come down, well done. So now you can nicely slide the block, blocks underneath the knees, a little treat for your pelvis, and just do your little wrist release from that. Steady out the breath. Good, you can do your little circles, whatever feels good, maybe a little sway. That's it, bringing things down a few notches. And then bring the hands to Anjali, close the eyes. I want to, you to reconnect with that inner universe, the sensation and breath. Reconnecting as you bow the head with your intention. Finding that 
inner reservoir of endless strength and peace, which we can always tap into whenever we feel challenged, both on or off the mat. And inhale, gently open the eyes as you lift the prayer hands up. Exhale to circle down through flamenco wrists. Good, so we're gonna take another vinyasa. If you prefer to stay seated a bit longer, that's okay. Otherwise, now you might try and use your bricks for this. We've been working with these principles of being able to lift up with view to then being able to take the legs back. So you might tinker with that. If you're doing this, do it on the lower setting, not the highest setting. So the mid setting is fine. So you inhale, press the hands into the bricks, squeeze and lift, maybe take your legs back, and then you can take your hands forward and lower down the chaturanga, release the toes. Inhale into the lift, back bend the choice. And exhale as you push back into downward dog. Take a breath there. We're going to open out the fronts of the hips after the compression which has occurred there. So three-legged dog can do this with the heels up or you can walk the feet in so the heels are down. See what feels best for you. On the inhale, take the right foot back, come onto the big toe. And on the exhale, float that right leg up into space. Find your ujjayi breath. Just lift from the inner thigh. So make sure you don't flare that right hip open. Good, lengthening, lengthening. Then exhale as you bring the right leg down. Changing sides, inhale, step back with the left foot. Exhale, lift the left leg. No strain or force. Take it easy. Push up with the hand, sink the chest towards the right leg, breathing. And inhale as you bring the left leg down. Exhale, bring the knees down. Untuck the toes and sit back into Virasana. Again, feel the neutralized instability of this position. Widening the energy down. If this doesn't feel right on your knees, please come to high kneeling or down to the sitting bones. Good, then from here, we'll try another fancy maneuver. So you can take the hands forward, cross the ankles, and then continue to sit back until you can pop your legs forward. That's it, <laughs> nice. If it doesn't work, just come down to sitting like you usually would, and that's okay. So just pop the bricks to one side. We're missing a balance, so we're gonna do another balance from Ashtanga, so walk the heels in. This balance is called Ubaya Padakontasana. This is option one, sitting tall as you would in your preparation for Navasana. Option two is to reach down and see if you can double finger loop the big toes. And you keep drawing the shoulders back, lifting across the sternum and maybe walk those heels in. This is option two. Keep a steady dressy looking straight forward. Option three is to tinker with lifting up single legs at a time. Try to do that on the exhale. So just work it into the hamstrings. See what's going on. If they don't like to straighten, this is a really nice uh, way to open them up. If you could just stay here. I'm sure you know where this is going. The next option is to lift the legs up and maybe take hold of the back of the legs. If you can reach the toes, you take hold of the big toes, double finger loop the toes, keep lifting the chest. So this is the next option. Sitting up on those sitting bones, lifting the gaze. Now from here, you can begin to tinker with bringing the legs together and possibly straightening out the legs as you lift through the heels. Draw the shoulders down and lift the chest. That's a tip. If you're round, you'll roll back. So keep lifting, squeezing, that's it, and gazing towards the big toes. So now a little wild card option, if you've still got some energy, is to release those toes and go hands free. Lift the arms up, effectively coming into Navasana. That's too much, there you are. And exhale, retake the toes, and then come down to Baddhakanasana. I did that a bit faster than I intended, but never mind. So bringing the soles of the feet together. And again, just butterfly wing the knees. Same with you, Jai. Being appreciative of all that you're able to do here. Not taking it too seriously. It's just a few yoga moves, that's all. That's it. Okay, we'll take another vinyasa from here. We're getting ready for the final three. So, crossing the ankles. 
You can hide the feet underneath you, that's another option. So you hide the feet, rock forward, and then step or jump back into your plank position and lower the body. Inhaling to lift and exhaling, pushing back into downward dog. Even out the breath. And from here, look forward, inhale, step, jog or jump through. Keep alternating legs if you're doing a jump through. If not, don't worry. So then from here, just stretch the legs out. Got a twist, so sit nice and tall. From here, hug the right leg in, and then step the right foot over the left leg as we come to our Bhamatsyandrasana. Sit tall as you hug in the shin, we'll do this twist and move on to the final three. Lift in the chest. So then you can do this Superman style or Superwoman style. You can do this Superwoman style. You take your left arm forward as if you're Superwoman with her cape. Left arm comes forward, wraps around the shin, and then inhale to lift to the right side. That's it. Exhale, plant that right hand back behind you. Feel that lovely, delicious twist emerge. You can look straight ahead to the side or maybe over the right shoulder. And we can turn this into a twist from uh, intermediate series. Again, if you're feeling energetic, you would just bend in the left heel towards the right glute, come to the same position. Again, only do that if that's okay for your knees. Now from there, you would take the left elbow over the right knee and then wrap the arm around to see if you can take hold of the inside of the right foot. It's a bit crazy. You might stay there, bring in a hand to chin mudra, or you might try and take hold of the inside of the right foot and continue to pivot round. Just see what's doable. Your body will tell you, it's okay. Different options, different days. Your practice should always look different. Just stay flexible. Wherever we are, we stay happy. Then inhale, glide the head to center. And exhale to release. Unwind the twist. Stretch the legs out. Come back to Dandasana briefly and let me change sides. So bending in the left leg. Step the left leg over. Back to Superman or Superwoman. Right arm comes forward. You've got your cape. You flick your cape back. Wrap around the shin and then inhale to lift to the left side. Roll that left shoulder open and just choose your dristy point. So whatever feels good on this side of the body is fine. Again, you can stay here, active toes of the right foot. If you want to take it a bit further, you can draw that right heel into the left glute and then re-enter the twist, lots of breath. Nice squeeze. Next option, if you've taken that option, is to take the right elbow over the left knee. Keep pivoting round so people use a little bit of traction to that side of the body. And then wrap the arm around so you take hold of the inside of the left foot. Bit of a deeper twist. And either look to the side or maybe over the left shoulder. Remember, if you can't breathe, you shouldn't be there. So you can drop that back to Chin Mudra. Good, everyone. Moment by moment choices helps us to stay present, helps us to be flexible. And inhale as you glide the head forward. Exhale, carefully release, unwind. Stretch out the legs. We've got one more vinyasa crossing left over right. Hide the feet, step or jump back. Lower the body, a few chaturanga. Inhaling to lift. Exhale, pushing back into downward dog. Inhale, bend the knees, look forward, step, jog or jump through to seated. As we've made it to the final three, have your bricks ready in case you need them. Our first posture is Bhadakanasana, cross leg, half lotus or full lotus, whatever suits you. Cross leg is fine. Only do the half or full if you're really comfortable doing that. Don't trouble your knees. Wrap the arms around the back. That's it, inhale, sit tall, lift. Exhale, begin to fold forward. The attitude of surrender, humility, 
you might go a little bit, you might go further, you might continue forehead towards the floor, even on the floor. Wherever you are, breathe deeply. And allow the waves of the exhale to carry you deeper. Allow the breath to do the work rather than any force of will. Now if this bothers your knees, the lower down you get, then you would always stretch your legs out. If you need to come back up, that's fine. Never power through. Then squeeze the pelvic floor, inhale to slowly lift all the way back up. Exhale. As you arrive, we come to Padmasana, keep the same leg position. Bring the hands to chin mudra, straight lines of energy. Extend out the other fingers. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, release the chin to the chest. Tip of the nose, dristy, sitting tall and breathing and feeling. So the belly stays relatively still. Make the chest a big vessel for the breath. Nice gentle grip between the first finger and thumb. Then inhale, lift the gaze. Exhale, release the mudra, ripple out the fingers. We got our final sting in the tail. We flip to here, which means to lift up the name of the class. So bringing the hands either side, uh, sorry, the bricks either side. Now you can do your lift up, lifting up of the feet. You can lift the ankles. So just choose the best position for yourself. I'm gonna demonstrate this, I think, yes. I'm a nice lotus position for those of you who want to see. So using your bricks, you inhale, exhale, press and lift. So you gather your legs up, keep breathing. If you can't lift up, it's okay, just engage. Stay strong, lots of you die. Draw those shoulders down, lift the chest, keep squeezing, squeezing. That's it. Squeezing your mother band there. One more breath. And exhale, coming down. Well done. Releasing the bricks. If you took full lotus, we just release that carefully. And from here, we've got a final vinyasa to freedom, or you can sit and wait. You're taking your vinyasa, hide the feet, step or jump through. Back to your plank position. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend of choice. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, step, jump or jump through to seated. And then lay all the way back. You feel, if you get the message to bring your knees in, you might draw your knees in, have a little self-hug, a squeeze. Have a rock from side to side. Thanking the body for all of the work, meeting the challenge. All this time well invested in yourself, your inner strength, your resilience. And um, when you've released from here, you can come to the final, most important position of Shavasana. If that suits your body, if not, choose an alternative. Palms are open, floppy ankles. Take a big inhale. Big exhale. And again, big inhale. Exhale. Last one, make it a good one. Big inhale. Exhale. Letting go of Banda, Dristi, Ujjayi, Yogasana. Allowing body and mind to drift towards stillness. The wash in the sea of prana drifting here for a short time.
So now becoming aware of the breath. And beginning to deepen the breath as you drift towards the surface. Awareness rising as you bring some micro movements to fingers and toes. And taking this into hands and feet. Inhale as you begin to move the head from side to side. Exhale. And when you're ready to, on the next inhale, taking a full body stretch from fingers to toes. Big inhale. Exhale to relax. And bending the knees and the elbows, drawing the knees into the belly for another little rock in Apanasana until you can roll over to one side and drop the bones heavy into the floor. Pause here for a moment, feeling that space, the sensation and breath, this welcome sanctuary. And stretching out the top leg as you press the top hand down. Inhale, leave, bring yourself up to a comfortable seated position. Wherever you are, sitting tall, lengthening the spine, lifting the heart space. And bringing the hands to Anjali Mudra as we give thanks for our health and our practice. Inhale to lift the prayer hands up. Exhale to center. Namaste. So thank you everybody. Well done for getting through the challenges of our practice. I hope you can keep this energy through the rest of your day. I'll see you soon.